Hey, welcome to the Qualify Gamer Guys podcast number 12. 12 is my lucky number, Neil. Is it? No, it's not. It's actually 14. All right, Why so we're going to start this off by shouting out to our good friends over at Core Gamer. Uh, Core Gamer brings us our news stories each and every day, which then we compile into a week's worth of news, so you don't have to. But if you'd like to, you can go over to coregamer.com, enter your email, sign up. They'll send you an email every day. That's Core Gamer, the biggest news in gaming daily. Neil, you know what time it is? I think it's time for... Video game history released something, something. You take it away, Steve. You're the host. It's actually uh, 725, but it is time for this week of video game release history. This week we are going for Mortal Kombat 9. Came out on April 19th. I wrote April 9th. That was incorrect. <laughs> April 19th, 2011. I had one job, Neil. I added one thing, <laughs> you to, the one Google, thing, to, the whole one thing to the Google Doc, and I didn't add it correctly. That's just typical. All right, so Mortal Kombat 9 came out. I liked it. Did you ever play it, Neil, or were you uh, scared? <laughs> I don't know. I played one, and it was a very recent one. I don't know if it was Mortal Kombat 9. It wasn't... Um, I think you just not know. I can't, because they're all the same. No, they're no. not all the same. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <They're> all... <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a 2D side one. It was three-dimensional. I'm oh, like... you probably played... More kind of first DC universe. No, no. Okay, I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe all I know is here's the only thing I know is when I was watch when I was playing Mortal Kombat, this game. I was also really into the Avatar show. Okay. And so last Airbender. Absolutely. And so we just made all those characters because you could have like all oh, this guy's like ice and this guy's like fire and so that's all we did and we played with that. So I couldn't even didn't even play. Let me. I got news for Neil. That was not Mortal Kombat Nine. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. It no, might not have even been Mortal no, Kombat, but I'm pretty no, sure it was. Create a character in Mortal Kombat Nine, and if there was, you know, create NK and character would both be spelled with K's. Anyway, let's talk about Mortal Kombat Nine. This game was really good. Uh, so good they banned it from South Korea. No, that's because it's really violent. Uh, so pretty much this is like Mortal Kombat's going back to the 2D platform. Uh, so they introduced X-ray attacks, which are awesome. Bone shattering. They uh, added a bunch of fatalities. They brought back tons of characters that hadn't been in more comic games in a long time. They had a really cool tower system with all these different challenges. And uh, yeah, it was fun. They also added Freddy Krueger in a, uh, a DLC pack. So... Uh, this was the first fighting game, other than the Smash Brothers, that I, like, literally played for months on end. Uh, so, I'm really <coughs> excited for Mortal Kombat X, which we will be discussing in a little bit, but not yet. Not uh, yet, but it's, um, Mortal Kombat, like, it seemed like they were trying to mess with a bunch of, like, their formula for a while, and it was kind of like, they were getting away from it for a bit, <laughs> and Nine was starting to bring it back, and <laughs> that's why it seemed, like... At least to me, it seems like everyone is really excited for 10. Yep. More so yeah. than the previous ones. Like, they're mm-hmm. just getting back to it, it sounds like. But we can talk about 10 in a bit. Mortal Kombat 9, just like, when it came out, everyone's like, this is the best fighting game that's come out in years. And this is finally a Mortal Kombat that we wanted to see. And uh, I guess that's why everyone's really excited for 10, because, you know, they saw it was like their first step going back. Now at 10, they're going to be like, all right, they they have you know the easy stuff out of the way. Let's see how how much better they can make it, and it looks really good. But uh, Mortal Kombat Nine, did you when the last time you played a Mortal Kombat? Do you remember your main character? Did you ever main anyone? No, I it was it was a game I could create a character, and I always played my created character. You're really boring, Neil. Uh, <laughs> I'm not Mortal Kombat. Like I've always it used at, when I was a little kid, it did scare me because okay. it was so brutal, but. I never, like I said, I've always been a Soul Calibur kind of three-dimensional kind of fighting person. So. Oh, see, I'm a 2D guy. Yeah. So, so I am a Katana user in most Mortal Kombats that she appears. I like her little, uh, she got fans that have knife blades on the end of them. She doesn't use a sword? No. The Katana is <laughs> just a Japanese sword, so she <laughs> she's lying. Her whole name is a lie. Well, I got news for you, Neil. She's his 
fans. <laughs> oh, I actually know who you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, she's she's the blue woman. Uh, gotcha. Like hair, and, long hair tie things. Yeah, yeah, black okay. hair. Uh, um, and as we all, I've mentioned before, actually, I am almost exclusively women in fighting games, just because they tend to be faster. Like yeah. I know, I think we talked about um, um, uh, DC, whatever that was called, Injustice. I think we talked about that. And my mains in that were Catwoman and uh, Batgirl. Because they just, I like small, quick characters, and they never make guys small and quick. So, well, yeah. maybe they do. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so Mortal Kombat 9 was good. And uh, that leads us straight into new releases. And coming out today, April 14th, is Mortal Kombat 10. Uh, so, do you have any interest in this? I will be picking it up, not on release day, I'm probably going to get it at the end of the week. Um, Oh, waiting, waiting a whole three days. Well, I like I don't know. I like I'm dog sitting my dog this weekend, so I'm like pretty much bound to the house. Gotcha. So like, and I'm busy this week, so I was just like, you know, I'll just like pick it up on the way home on Friday and just like play it this weekend with, while I'm hanging out with my dog. So, oh, right, that makes uh, sense. You know, because I'll be I'll be able to play through the entire story and then like start like you know getting characters together. So it'll be fun. Yeah, I uh. It's not that I think it's a bad game. It just doesn't interest me. Fair enough. I know. It's just not your type of fighter. You said you're a 3D, yeah. not 2D plane. And um, when Dead or Alive 5 last round came out with those free characters, and I yeah. really love that fighting game. So if I have a fighting like itch, I just play that. Mm. So I got like my fighting game covered. This is It's got a pretty cool system that each character has three different fighting styles. So I'm going to be interested to see how that, how that works. Uh, and uh, apparently what they do is they change the combos. So, like, normal moves are pretty much the same. So, like, if you're just doing, like, uh, like easy execution moves, like, let's say, like, back forward square does a certain move, but combos are different. So it'll be, it'll be interesting uh, to see how that changes gameplay. And I'm not sure if you can switch on the fly, because in Mortal Kombat Deception, you had three modes, and you were able to switch on the fly. You'd be like, that, you know... Well, one of them would be like your katana would be like in the ready mode. One of them would be like it, it, you held it high and deflect stuff like that. So, yeah, I, it sounds cool. It's like I'm interested to see how it does because I know everyone loves Mortal Kombat and it's not to say it's been dying lately, but like I feel like for a bit it's it was just, on the decline, mm-hmm. and that it it's, seems like it's coming back. It's like a it's such a pillar of video gaming too. Like yeah. like, like a Mortal Kombat's just like always around. So because uh, well, I also think it's because. A few, even just a few years ago, fighting games were kind of not. I don't want to say losing their identity, but a few years ago it was all about like the newest, trying to make everything newer and newer. Yeah. And then now we're getting closer to retro, and I'm not calling Mortal Kombat 10 a retro game, but now mm-hmm. a 2D fighting game is now acceptable again. People are liking mm-hmm. them more than the other games. I'm seeing less 3D fighters now, and it's going more to 2D. Mm-hmm. Um. Even which, and then you, which must upset you because you don't like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm waiting for that for all those 3D games to come back. But that's why I think it's it's just kind of resurging again, and I'm really interested to see how it does. Even though personally, I don't have a huge uh, interest in it myself. It'll be. Uh, I love getting into Mortal Kombat and like finding all the combos and just going through all the characters and doing all their fatalities and all that. That's so much fun. Uh, so yeah, that comes out. Uh, another big release, I think that that's that's a pretty big release there. But GTA yeah. Five is finally releasing on the PC. It's yeah, I guess the only upside to taking so long is is it's got some really cool modes that's like PC only. Like there's like a director mode kind of thing, so you can literally make your own films almost. And that'd be cool to see what people make it using that. You yeah. know, like what they get out of it. It's insane what people can come up with. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing like. All those crazy movies. Mm-hmm. And so you know someone's going to make like a 45-minute like drama detective series or something like that. Yeah. And do yeah, crazy you know, things. It'll be interesting. That'll be cool. It's a good point. So, I mean, you know you know what the deal is with GTA Five by now. But it's nice that the PC is finally coming out. Especially because you'll, you'll see some cool mods on it, you know? Oh, definitely. Like that's um, oh, – someone did the coolest mod on GTA Four. I mean there's a ton of them, but – I am like always. I'm so amazed at what modders can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do some. I mean, you ever see like how good they got Skyrim looking? Um, oh yeah, it's insane. It really is. It's cool you, stuff. You see the one when in Skyrim how he just this one guy made everything go crazy, 
and like all dragons were Thomas the Tank Engines. Yes, and, and they they're, just, they're terrifying. <laughs> they were they're just, terrifying. And the guys he was commentating on during it goes, "Oh my God, it's Thomas!" And he was like freaking out, and there's like yeah. giant Sonics running around. Like it was just the wackiest thing. Oh but it, was, it looked great. Yeah, it, it looked beautiful. It looked great. It looked gorgeous. Gorgeous, Neil. Uh, what's Titan Souls? Because it's coming out on the PS4 and Vita. <laughs> Titan Souls is a game that I kind of forgot about, but I just saw saw something online about it again, so it reminded me. It's kind of like Shadow of the Colossus, but in 8-bit. Hmm. Or six, I think 16-bit, technically, if we're going to get real technical about it. Um, um, I'll hold you to that. We're technical, <laughs> Neil. And so it, the thought is, you basically one little guy, and it's it's a top-down game, and... You have one bow and one arrow, and that's it. Oh, God. And, <laughs> hey, man, Bloodborne gets you ready for anything. It's this. And so you fight against these giant monsters, basically. Mm-hmm. And you shoot the arrow, and the longer you hold the button, the further you can shoot it. But Boring! The, but, if, but if you miss, <laughs> the further you have to go to pick it up, because that's your only arrow. Okay. And, so, and, the, and you can also like use a magic power to, and you, like pull it towards you, but to uh-huh. do it, you have to stand still. So, obviously, if the huh. guy's chasing, you can't do it. It's supposed yes. to be a really fun game that's just, like, one of those quirky indie games that's really challenging but really rewarding. Uh-huh. And it's it's just boss fights. There's nothing else. So, it is, it's really like Shadows of the Colossus and stuff like that. That's what they compare it to. Mm-hmm. And so, I'm intrigued by it. I don't think I'm going to get it because it sounds like a free game eventually yes. down the line. It smells like <sighs> free game of the month. Absolutely. So, that's what I'm not getting yet, but it's something that I'm going to play. If it does come out, or if there's like a, if it comes out and it's like five bucks at some point, I'll b- probably buy it. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. I don't, I don't seem interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what? Do you know what our next game starts with Neil? It starts with a G, because <laughs> it's <laughs> Coat Simulator on the Xbox One. I like you doing inside <laughs> jokes that only I get on a podcast. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever. Uh, so, I mean, you're the only one listening anyway. Goat Simulator. I think we're all familiar with the antics of Goat Simulator at this point. So it's coming out, which is cool, I guess. What if it makes, like, just, like, a, a insane amount of money? Like, they just released on the Xbox One, and that's, like, the perfect demographic for Goat, Goat Simulator. Goat Simulator 2, then, we'll be seeing. Absolutely. Perhaps. What's the other kind of goat? They call it a goat, and then there's, like, a there's another one. Not, like, a kid. Or Billy. A Billy? I don't know. <laughs> a female goat? Are they not still goats? No, I thought they had like another name. Uh, here we go. <laughs> female <laughs> goat. <laughs> wow. Female. Billy. Goat. No. Oh, Annie. Bill? Doe. Nanny. A doe? Nannies and Billies. Another name. <laughs> another name. The third? No, it, it's, it's literally Nanny. Th- Alright. We're, we're getting too off topic. Another I'm okay name. with going off topic, but this is too oh. off topic. A buck. Buck is a, a male guy. A boob. Uh... <laughs> chug chug. All right. So Goat Simulator is coming out for the Xbox One. If you were upset it was on the PS4 or PC or whatever, uh-huh. it's only on the PC, and you missed it, now is your chance to get it on the Xbox One. Hollow Horned Mammal is not what I'm looking for. <laughs> um... All right, yeah, so Goat Simulator. Go and play the goat. It's uh, it's the greatest of all time. Huh? Huh? I love you that. You? Oh, I got it. I know you would. I know you would. By the way, a castrated goat is called a weather. Um, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> all right, time to go on to the news brought to us by Core Gamer. Brought to us, not brought to you. Brought to us by Core Gamer. Um, let's start off with something that excites me dearly. Black Ops 3 is being announced, or has been announced, or something. There was a teaser. <laughs> uh, okay. D- I'm guessing that. you have not watched it then. I have not, but I just heard, and I was like, well, you know, Black Ops 3 is good. I loved Black Ops 2. It was my favorite COD in the last, uh-huh. since COD, since COD Modern Warfare 2. Uh, it was my favorite Call of Duty. So I'm excited. I'm just, hap- I'm just hoping that... It's not the exact same path as the Modern Warfare series. Where like I liked Modern Warfare One, I loved Modern Warfare Two. Modern Warfare Three was a steaming chip pile of trash. So yeah, it, yeah, I don't know. They're all about the trilogies. Plus, I just like Treyarch. Is the thing. Yeah, I do. That's my, They're that's my favorite developer of COD. 
I used to love um, Infinity Ward, but they've just been dropping the ball but, left and right. And bananas, and they're so stupid. They want bananas, Neil. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Sledgehammer is uh, cleaning up for them, though. So loving Sledgehammer's work on Advanced Warfare. But yeah, Black Ops 2, it wasn't my favorite, but I love Black Ops 1. We had that... a lot of fun with it. We played Black Ops 2 a lot. That <laughs> we summer. did. We had a lot of fun with it, but I, I would get more frustrated. You'd have like all these little robots <laughs> running around. I, I would get like three AGRs at once. And I just, so I just struggled like... all the time. But it's not... It's not a crazy trailer. It's just it's a teaser. It's just an announcement, basically. But it's I like a, the way they. It's a it's a announcement of an announcement, basically. But uh, the way that they did it was cool. Is that in Black Ops Two, which people still played, suddenly all the posters changed, mm-hmm. and on the poster was a Snapchat QR code. Oh yeah, I did hear about the. Yeah, the and so if you and if you so if you entered their Snapchat. If you uh, followed them or whatever, okay. they'd start sending things that looked like Black Ops 3. So that's kind of how it was like. That's cool. So that was really cool that they did that. I mean, that's typical companies trying to use new social media to keep up with mm-hmm. us kids these days. But it was it was cool that they let people figure it out. Like, I wonder how long it took with the posters up. Probably not that long because people are – they figure things out fast. But it was a cool way to do that and I – People kinda... that are not us are generally pretty intelligent. <laughs> We just look at something and be like, oh, it looks like a Snapchat symbol. All right, whatever, and just move on from it. Um, House of Wolves, what's that? <laughs> oh, Destiny, my favorite game. Favorite game ever. Destiny's so- next, tra- uh, next DLC, House of Wolves. I actually didn't know what this was. I uh, got the trailer released, and it's coming out, like, what, May 19th, I think I heard? I, I think so. I should probably have written that down, but I just wanted to talk about the fact it's that it's May 9th. Yeah, it's May so, 9th. Yeah. did you watch the trailer? No, I didn't, because I hate Destiny, but go on. <laughs> so, it, I mean, it was it was a CGI trailer, so it doesn't show any gameplay or anything like of course. that. It's just a story. But basically, remember the rift when you flew out to that little ring out there and you talked to that one queen who sat on a throne and then you left and that was a whole yeah, thing that was it you're now going to go there and play the game there <laughs> so the whole point is the fallen have taken over and she's like let the guardians come and say our treasure is theirs if they get rid of the fallen and so that's that's the premise of it so it's basically a new area that you can play mm-hmm. but it's not coming with a raid which is what everyone wanted from yeah what, obviously from what i've we've heard which we did not play because we sold Destiny because we didn't really care at this point. But the but the raids in Destiny are apparently really fun. They're like the one really redeeming quality of Destiny. And so that's all people care about now. And the fact that they're releasing a DLC without a raid is absolutely absurd. And it's will get I don't know if they're gonna do this or not, but if they try to sell the raid separately, that's uh-huh. gonna be like I think a lot of people should just boycott that game at that point, because that's absurd. But I don't know if they're gonna do that. They might just really, they, like it might not be ready, and they're just gonna mm-hmm. release it for free later. Who knows? But I don't, you know, just <laughs> why? What is wrong with Bungie? Like, when did they become a terrible developer? I don't know. They made one thing. They made one good game, and they kind of like wrote on that success for a while. They're like, oh yeah, we made Halo. We can do the worst things ever, and everyone's still gonna love us. Basically. Oh god. And I don't even like Halo. <laughs> uh, Bungie sucks. I was so excited for Destiny. I was so excited. We, it's also because there was nothing. That was last year was a really long summer drought, like a really long one. I mean, we played like Days of Ghosts, and we hated yes, that we game. Did. And so when Destiny finally came, we were so excited and we were like so let down by it. We still we had a lot of fun with it. I'm not gonna say we didn't have fun with it. We we like pretended it was good for like a week. And then we, then we admit it. We were just like, you know what? This game sucks. Well, I mean, those, we were like, those, we were like this those, game. Those, those were dark times. But it was, it was the most unique thing. We're like, oh, Destiny sucks. It's so stupid. Why do they do this? Why do they do this? You want to yeah. play kept, tomorrow? And yeah. then we'll still play it. Well, because nothing was out. I'm gar- I, I like, I'm convinced the only reason that happens is because nothing was out. Yeah, because we played it right up until Call of Duty, didn't we? And then we just sold it. And then we just played Call of no, Duty. I quit it i think i only played it for like a month i quit it in early october and then i got um borderlands 2 i mean borderlands the pre-sequel on my pc and i played that 
I felt like something came out specifically that I was I sold it for. You played Shadows of Mordor when it was. Oh, that's a good game. I gotta get that game again. Oh yeah, shouldn't have sold it. Uh, yeah, you played Shadows of Mordor, so uh, then I played that way later. better game. Hundred times better. So anyway, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're out there you're still playing Destiny, God save your soul. But got some new DLC coming your way. <sighs> All right, uh, take this one. I, don't, you know, I, I love, I love your size. After like things you don't care about, you go. <sighs> All right. So <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm moving on to something else that I don't care about because this is what played. happens when I do the news. You don't know except no. All right, you know two more things on the list, but the other three more things you don't know. So. You always do the news. That's your yeah. thing. Yeah. So, uh, Final Fantasy Type Zero has sold over a million copies, which is okay. a big success for what they thought it was going to do, and everyone assumed it was because of the de- the demo. But now they have like more statistics behind it because Type Zero's price is dropping really quickly, and that's because so many people are selling it back because they don't care. It's on Amazon today. Yeah. Uh, Steve Steele right there, $40. Steve Steele, Steve Steel. Neil Steele and Steve Steele. <laughs> so, basically, it sold a million copies, which is really big, and then everyone's selling it back because they just wanted the demo, which almost shows that if you sell a demo, people will probably buy the demo, and I really hope that doesn't start to happen. Yeah, well, no, don't do that. Well, they were, I mean, that would be like paying for a beta. You can, you do do that. That'd be a shame. There's definitely betas out there that you have to pay ten dollars to get in, and then they'll give you the game. No, that's like, that's like, um, that's like, uh, like early access, I guess. We, you okay, know, that. I, I get you what you're what saying. Mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying, Neil? <laughs> Do you yes. understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Uh, yeah. So, in anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think that. I love, I love you stumbling through this because you have no idea. So <laughs> I have no idea. No, I'm just trying. I'm trying to get my way through this. I'm sorry, Neil. It's been a long week. I. I'm just. I just keep. I mean, the only thing, just beginning. Sadly, the only thing that runs through my head is Bloodborne every day. Like I'm sitting at work, I'm just thinking of Bloodborne. Here's what I, we're I'm trying to this. do this as fast as possible, yes. just so we can talk so we can about play, Bloodborne and then, and then go play, play Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Cause Cause we don't care about anything else. About. You. I mean, six. Four or five people that are listening to this, you are yeah. lucky that this is not just an hour long of us talking about Bloodborne. So anyway, uh, Yokai Watch is coming out on <laughs> the in the US. The sequel. Sequel. So Yokai Watch. I kind of know what it is. It's like a Pokemon ripoff. Yeah, it's supposedly going to take over Pokemon. And... Okay. No. <laughs> nothing takes over Pokemon. And well, here's the thing. Is the main character's name Soot? You get I... it? Because the main character of Pokemon's Ash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Yokai Watch is basically Pokemon, like Steve said. The main difference is it's very punny, filled with I puns. I just made a pun. You did. You made a great pun. It, it fit perfectly, and it's, it's got has a lot of wordplay. Ooh. And so a lot of the mo- oh. and like I read an article and who's like and the person was like, "This is a great game." America is not going to understand it because it's all Japanese wordplay. Haven't we heard that before? And then people just like love Japanese games. And there's you a know. lot of there's a lot of um, what do they call those people? Uh, weeaboos in America. The what? <laughs> a weeaboo is someone who just like thinks they're Japanese because they're really into Japanese culture. I've never heard of that before. Oh, I'm sorry if I offended anyone because Urban Dictionary told me it is a negative term <laughs> directed to anyone who is overly obsessed with Japanese culture to the point they become annoying. Well, anyway, go on. If <laughs> yeah, so it's coming. It's a big deal because apparently a lot of people do want it. These whatever word you just said that's probably insulting, so we should probably shouldn't say it. Is <laughs> coming to the U.S. It's taking place in the U.S. as well, mm. and so it's kind of that's also interesting. That's like. It used to take place in the cities of Japan, and now they're taking it out and they're putting it in the U.S. And the whole thought is, oh, we'll put it in the U.S., people in the U.S. will play it, and they won't feel as left out if it's taking place in Disney World or something like that. It's, it looks really weird. Place? Disney World? I, I don't know. They have a crocodile Dundee yokai is what it appears. Yokai are like the thing. They're like the Pokemon. And I think you control them with your watch. That's the whole – that's where the title comes from. You control them with your watch. So like – they like go into your watch instead of a belt. 
Hmm, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, can't wait, Neil. <laughs> it's for the 3DS, Steve. This is why I got it. This is the game for it. You make me angry. I should beat Zelda someday. You should. You should do that. Or play Bravely Default. Uh, um, I'm forgetting about that. Yeah. Bravely Default, man. It's a great game. Tell me about this next one, Neil. <laughs> I love this. The, the, I'm going to start making them get harder and harder. <laughs> after, after this, to be fair, to the next story I know about. So yes. go on. Okay. So, Square Onyx has released a te- another teaser. Square Onyx. Get your mouth. Enix. I, I always say that. Pokemon, man. It's Pokemon's all over you. Onyx. So, <laughs> Sorry. So here's this teaser. <laughs> something up and something auto-played. That's um, not bad. So it's just a picture. So the game. So there's a series of games and they're called Star Ocean. And the whole point is they take place in space. Other teasers, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Shout out to my so the girls. Whole point, the whole Go. point of this game is, the, this series is, it's a star ocean. They take place in space or whatever like that. Well, that's a stretch. Game ocean of stars. Go on. It's real deep. So I just like that. The, it's just a picture. Deep. So it's a picture of what looks to be a mountain range in, from space of the Earth. And then it has the letters S. What? What? A mountain range from space of the Earth. (laughs) What does that mean, Neil? I mean, it's not a picture of the of all of Earth. Okay. But it's clearly from space, zoomed in on like a mountain range. Okay. Okay. Go on. Mountain line or something. And so it's just a picture of that, and then it has three letters and four numbers over it, and it's S blank A R. So people go clearly they left the T out. It must stand for star. And then 0101 is binary code for 5, apparently. So they're saying it's Star 5, which is Star Ocean, the fifth game. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be amazed if that's right. And I never get why people, why companies have to like do these weird yeah, why not, things. I don't, I don't understand. I don't either. But it's, it's one of those games that – series that never is super successful, but it's successful enough where they keep doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, at least in the U.S. I'm I'm sure in Japan it's very popular. It's kind of more in that region. I played I played the last one, which was kind of interesting. It was a little weird, and then I didn't really make it through because I kind of got bored of it. Mm-hmm. But it has it has a really fun battle mechanics in it. It's not okay. turn based. I like it, battle mechanics. <laughs> it's like where you have a random encounter, and then it like goes into arena, and you do. It's more like an action game. So that's kind of cool. It uh, I know people love it, so they're like. Internet's blowing up right now all about this one picture. It's going to be really funny if maybe it's a game that's just called, like, SAR0101 or something. Mm-hmm. But I feel bad, Steve, because you have no idea what's going on. So I'm going to let you I'm gonna let you talk for a little bit on this I'm next gonna, one. I want your thoughts I'll on it. I'll talk about Splatoon, which you'll have no idea what's going on. I mean, all there is to mention is... I, I mean, I know what's going on, but I want to I wanna discuss Splatoon it because it's interesting. Splatoon will not have voice chat. And the reason being is that the people at Nintendo making the game said that they've had nothing but negative experiences using voice chat uh, with, like, random players or whatever, so that they want to make sure... They never want a video game to be a negative experience. They always want you to step away from it in a positive light. Obviously, they've never played Bloodborne. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But, um... Which, like, I understand, but there's no excuse why you can't have, like, party chat only. You know what I mean? Yeah, it... I mean, you, that's why you so, mute The people. game is so centered. This game is so centered on uh, on teamwork too. It's so annoying. I, I mean, that's that's the whole thing. It's it's a teamwork oriented game, so it's even stranger. It's not like oh yeah, you're just playing and you might run into somebody or something. It's like no, you kind of need the voice chat to deal mm-hmm. with the whole game. Which I mean, I don't. If I get Splatoon, which I don't think I am. Is it, it's a, is it a Wii U game or a 3DS? It's game? a Wii U game, Neil. So I'm not. So I'm definitely not getting it. So I was gonna say, <laughs> I don't think I am. Yes, you don't even have the system it's coming out on. <laughs> so you how much I care about Nintendo, but I always mute people immediately <laughs> for any game I play, Call of Duty or whatever, because I just yes. don't like talking to people because they're for the exact reason Nintendo is not including it. People are mean, mm-hmm. and they're and it's pointless. They're always just blasting music and stuff, so it doesn't really matter. So. I don't like, so I don't care, but I don't like them not giving you the option to have it at all. Mm-hmm. Like, 
that's what muting people is for. I don't like that they just take it all out. And like, no, you know what? You're just not going to be allowed to talk to anybody at all. Uh, it's frustrating, but I mean, it's Nintendo and it's online. So what does everyone really expect? Let me tell you something, Neil. Are you listening? I'm listening. Nintendo is the stupidest company ever. <laughs> <laughs> they really like, are. Not only does this game need voice chat to be good, but... If this game had voice chat, I could say to someone, like, let's say, for example, we're friends. This is hypothetical, of course. I could say, don't you dare. Um, and I say, hey, I'm really loving this game Splatoon. You should get it. And you go, oh, what is it about? And I explain it. So that looks really fun. Then I go, but we can't talk to each other. <laughs> You'd have like, to Skype and just sit in yeah, the computer. What we used to have to do. What we used to do, because you were too cheap to buy a $20 USB headphone for six months. <laughs> it was so close to the PS4, there was no I point. I not care. We would Skype, because you're an idiot. <laughs> Which is so, like, and with your terrible internet, that only made it worse. The, the greatest was, I'm really impressed with how we were able to stream at all. With the setup that we used to do with two <laughs> Skype laptops yeah. and one microphone yeah. and bouncing it back and forth. That was good. That was you amazing. did some crazy setups. I'm I'm glad that they just let you share the party the audio now. from now on. Why I don't understand why they didn't do that originally. I don't. They just I don't know how things get messed like that. How who knows how words are formed, Neil? Uh, well, you can't form them in Splatoon. You cannot. Fo- that was great. You cannot form <laughs> words in Splatoon, but you could shoot your gun and draw a penis on the wall. So who wins <laughs> this one? It's the perverts. The perverts uh, always win, Nintendo. Perfect always win. All right. I'm going to take the next one and skip over the second one. <laughs> so, it's just so I can continue talking because I like to do such things. Oh, talk away. Uh, the Masters is not. <laughs> I was going to say, what about it? Pregnant pause there. People right there, they uh, they looked at their, their YouTube and they're like, did it stop? Did it nope. stop? Got them. Uh, anyway, the Masters. Not in EA PGA Tour, which is actually called Roy McIlroy Golf, you, d- you dingus. <laughs> Roy McIlroy PGA Tour Golf 15 does not have the Masters, which is a big deal because it took them to uh, PGA Golf 12 to get the Masters, and then here we are three years later and it's already gone. So a <laughs> little bit of a buzzkill, but... It's not a game changer, but it's kind of interesting that this article pointed out that the Golf Club, which is a independently made golf game that lets you create your own courses, someone has recreated Augusta National, which is the Masters course, perfectly. So you can play it on that, which is kind of cool. But um, yeah, it's a little disappointing as someone who's planning on purchasing the game. But I mean... Out of all the PGA Tour games released, only three of them have ever had the Masters, and like 12 of them haven't, so it's not a game breaker. Is, is, there, is there another game of just the Masters somewhere? Like, is no. some other company? They're just no right. one has it. So, let me tell you. Okay, tell me. Augusta National, which is the name of the course that the Masters are played at, is very against, like, technology and stuff. The course. So, when... P- when, when when EA came to them and said, listen, we really want to put the Masters in, in our video game, they were like really against it. They were against video games. So they said, we promise you, we will make it a perfect replica of your course down to every tree and branch. So secretly behind the scenes, they worked on one course for four years to get it into the game until it was literally perfect. And they brought it to Augusta and said, look, this is our digital representation of this course. And they were so blown away by it that they let them have the rights and they let them do it, which was a huge deal. So it's so strange that now it's not in there. Maybe they didn't renew the deal, but four years of work went into one course, into a game that has 25 courses, one course. And now it just doesn't matter because those assets aren't used anymore. So I really don't understand. But um, so yeah, nothing has the masters and you can't play it anywhere. So it's weird. It's a strange thing. Uh, it's, but, yeah, sorry. It's just um, that is suck. That that sucks that they, they took so long. They like recreated it, and then it's like, yeah, no, we changed the mind. It it seems strange that I I didn't think of it like that. That I thought like the players would need permission. I kind of thought the courses were all part of some golfing union type of deal or something no, like that. They're all indivi- individually run, which so. is 
you would think they would want in a game. I don't know. I'm sure it's some old 90 year old man that just like is in it charge is. of it. Yeah, it is. And this, so he's just like video well, games. Well, you're gonna Dolph, steal my soul. Golf is like that game, and it is like a you know surrounded like those people in general. You know, yeah. It's like a it's like an older person's game, so they're wary of video games. But like, I think the PGA itself should be pretty upset because they're they're doing this pretty strong initiative right now of trying to get young people into the game, and something like this would help. But oh yeah, for sure. And but I, I mean, mean, if if it's creating the golf club, whatever. Yeah, but like that game's animations look like garbage, and you can't play as any pros. So oh, okay, that's fair. That sucks. I mean, that always it's always a weird one. Like, I remember, I think it was a random UFC game that I was playing back in the day, and like they were just missing some like main people. Like it always sucks when a sports game is missing something that like it's it's very obvious that this should be included into it, and it just seems strange. And then you know down the line they're gonna they're gonna eventually go into it, and it's gonna be like oh it's this big deal. They're they're back. Mm-hmm. What if they have to spend like they have to redo the whole course? They have one guy, and his whole job at EA is just to keep updating the Masters course for what it looks like today, just in yeah. hopes that they eventually can get it back in the game. And then, like, finally, they're like, "Oh, uh, by the way, this isn't going in." And he's like, "You motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on this for five years." Like, that would be the worst. What if it's not? Oh boy! So you know what's not a bad thing, Steve. Magicka, Wizard Wars. Okay. Oh, I was under the impression it was a bad thing, but go on. It's out of beta, or it's coming out of beta. Ooh. It's leaving beta. Nice. Beta is being left behind, kicked to the curb. Moving on. <laughs> Kick the bucket, pushing up daisies. It's not. <laughs> I don't think it's not dead. So basically, Magicka. Dead. The thing it's about Magicka is, um, <laughs> I've never I, played it. But it looks like a game that I really want to play. It's a free game for the PC. It's a game that if I could convince Steve to play it, which I never could, it would be a lot of fun. Because the thought of it is basically you get a couple basic spells. And it'll, I don't know, be like fire, water, something like that. And yeah. you combine them to make like hundreds of combinations. So now I can't appreciate the color wheel. But it's the same thought process that you have three primary colors and you just make more colors out of that. It's uh-huh. like that with magic. And so you have to like kind of start a spell book. Not you don't start it yourself, but like it's kind of it's hard to start playing the game because it's so complicated at first. You have to understand like, oh, to heal, I need to use two of this and one of this. But eventually you can do like start doing really crazy combinations. And it's like a multiplayer co-op kind of game that you go through levels almost like Gauntlet Legends. Yeah, is it like four pe- is it four people or three people? I'm not sure. Okay. I, I thought it was four people, but now that you say three, I can't say for certain. But it's a it's a really fun game that I know a lot of people like, and it's one of those games that's been in beta for a really long time. Like you know how PC games do that all the time; they'll just be in mm-hmm. beta for years, and then they'll finally release. Like so, this game's officially releasing. It's officially releasing. Release the Kraken, Neil. Release the Magicka. <laughs> On April twenty seventh, twenty eighth. The Magicka. Missed that. Okay. That'd be a great tagline. That's what it should have been. It should have been feel the magica. Feel the magica. <laughs> feel the magica. And that's the news. Feel the magica. Unless you got a secret news topic, Steve, which I don't think you do. I have a secret news topic, Neil. Do you really? No, I don't. Sorry. Oh, uh, can't get me all excited like that. Oh, you got me. Uh, all right. Let's get to what we really want to talk about here. <laughs> Let's just. This is what we've been waiting for. We went through so, the news as fast as possible so we could talk about. Battlefield Hardline. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about. Battlefield Hardline. Neil, tell me, how's Battlefield Hardline? Did I talk about it last podcast? I think you mentioned it briefly. I, I don't think anything's changed from it. Oh, wait, I don't know. Well, here's the, here's the thing. Didn't you play this weekend? I played it last weekend, too, though, so I think I talked about it. But it's kind of... I didn't play Bloodborne this weekend because he's terrified to play it without me on party chat. I, just, I was doing too many things. And bl- I was really looking forward to it because I was like, I'm going to sit down and play Bloodborne. I'll play for like an hour, then I'll go do something. So I would like see some stuff, explore some stuff. I'm still like back in the church. Like I haven't even gone through the sniper section of Abe Lincoln of all those guys. I'm so far behind all you now. Abe it's Lincoln's. not okay. Um, But we're talking about Bloodborne in a second because we're going to talk about it for a long time, I feel. Or at least just start ranting about it. Battlefield, it's still a lot of fun. I remember I did talk about the heist mode, and I talked about the money, heist, uh, not heist, hot wire with the cars, 
driving around. That's a lot of fun. That's still fun. Uh, I played more of the campaign, and what bothers me is, like, you can sneak, like, Far Cry, and I know I said that before. Yeah, it's the... I think you mentioned this last week. The AI, like, your partner's AI just sucks. Oh, yeah. Like, I have screenshots of her just, like, running through people, and they just don't, like, do anything. She's, like, invisible to them. It's a even, woman. Even as they're shooting at me. There's, like, there's women and guys and stuff. It's a crazy world out there, Steve. And so... What's annoying, what I didn't realize is, is, like, you can arrest people, and you do it, you flash the badge, and they freeze. Mm-hmm. But you can do that, you don't have to, like, sneak up behind them or anything. So, if at any point you're standing, and, like, a guy's about to, like, you're going to walk, he's gonna, his cone of vision is going to walk into you, you can just flash your badge, and he'll just, like, freeze, and you can take him out. So, it makes it almost, like, too easy that you don't even have to, like, work your way around. You can just run straight up to people, and just flash your badge, and it'll stop, and you arrest them, and you, I don't know, there, it was a, a fun campaign, but it's not the battlefield I want, but it's still fun. I recommend it if you're looking for fun shooters. But if you really want that battlefield experience of jets and whatnot and tanks. Which I don't want. <laughs> yeah. That's why Steve likes like, – that's the, that's the perfect example. Steve hated yeah. all the other battlefield games, but he really liked this one. When you work – it's like, example, all day at work, I'm surrounded by Navy ships and weapons and stuff, right? I don't want to come home and do that. It's like the guy who works at McDonald's doesn't make a cheeseburger for dinner. He, he probably to... does. And you, I don't know. The picture does. I just got was you like tinkering with like bombs on your desk or something like that. <laughs> That's just the yeah. way it sounded to me right there. Got weapons all around me. I'm Snapchatting at the same time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, it's I, want, I want I want something that's that's like I want something that's like never alone. Which you played? How the. How the <laughs> I, I started Never Alone. I didn't know what to expect. I kind of thought it would be... I didn't think it would be difficult or anything. And from we as should, far as I can tell... Co-op. If we play co-op, can I play as the bear? Is that how it works? It's a fox, but yeah, you absolutely can. Damn it, I'm not playing anymore. I thought it was a bear. You don't want to be a fox? <laughs> no! What? I'll be the fox. You can be the Foxes little girl. Are small, weak, but wise. I want to be big and strong. <laughs> So, never alone. It's a uh, game. Oh, nice. Guys, stop the presses. It's the game. D- it's Neil's deal. Never alone. <laughs> free. Free. <laughs> free free this month. Never you know alone. What you steal is if you go to Redbox and you photocopy the uh, the disc, you can steal video games. <laughs> you steal. <laughs> it's, it's a steal. So, it's a steal. <laughs> never alone. We're losing it. Never, Never alone. Never alone. I've only played like 30 minutes of it. I think it's Never only alone. a two and a half hour game around that. One of those really short games. Yeah. It doesn't seem like there's any crazy puzzles. It always seems like you're just running left to right. And then every now and then you have to jump. And if, it, and there's, if there's a strong breeze, you have to crouch. But the whole point is... <laughs> you know, that's like the worst sell job I've ever heard. I'm not I selling the fun. game off the gameplay. The whole point of this game is you have to be kind of into history. And I think it tells a real tale about a little girl okay. or at least a myth about a little girl. Like it's a real story okay. in that culture. So it's not just like a made up video game story. It's based off what culture. It's, I don't think it's the Inuit, but it it's like the That's Eskimos. Good, Cause I wouldn't be into it. Uh, oh, you got me. You're just dropping them today. I so, am. and so it's really cool the way that the story is told. And I am actually really interested in the story. Cause it's all about like this crazy blizzard has hit this village and this yeah. little girl is out looking for food, and she comes back, and some crazy guy like murders her entire village as she's gone. All right, that took a turn. It, it takes a real serious turn. It's like it's she's like terrific. playing with this fox, and she's like in the snow, and then she comes back, and her village is on fire, and there's this guy with an axe like chopping people. It gets dark real fast. So I'm interested in the story. Gameplay could not be more boring from what Good. I played. I've only played the first 30 minutes. It could get crazy. I doubt it. But it's it's um, free, so play it if you I, I downloaded it. I may play it eventually. You know me and downloadable games. I, I rarely go to them. All right. Very quickly, I played MLB 15, the show here and there, but me and Neo have been heavy into Bloodborne. Oh, <laughs> so was that all your MLB 15? Well, like, I played, like, one night last week. I did, like, uh, some more of my Road to the Show guy. Okay. I'm in the beginning of August, so I'm almost done with the first year or so. Uh, that goes really that. fast. It does. You can crank. You can if you play every night, you'll crank out a year a week, which is fun. 
Yeah, that's cool. I like I like it moving because I like when I play. The only real sports game I play like that is NHL. Yeah. And there's always that point when I just go like I play it a ton. I go, I'm just gonna sim until the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Because I just want to like move it. I just want to get that progression going, and it takes too long. So the show sounds like it's always moving, which sounds really cool. It is moving. It's quick, and like I said, the loading times make a di- big difference for how many games you can get in. So you know, it doesn't Blood- have good loading times. Bloodborne. And they make you sit there and just think about what you've done. <laughs> you were so true. All right, so before I had Bloodborne, Steve told me that if he died and there was a loading screen, you just it's just black with the t- title Bloodborne, but it's mostly black. So you just see your reflection in the TV of just like your stupid, sad face <laughs> after dying. Yeah, and it's and so just, true because every time thinking, I die. Just thinking to yourself, fuck, now I got to go back in there, find my souls, get in, or echoes rather. <sighs> It's just it's such a hassle. It's but it's, it's fun. and it's always it, the greatest. What happens to me is whenever I die, I always sit there and like I let the controller like hang in my hands. I look so defeated, and then there's always this thought process in my mind like, okay, I'm done. I'm I can't do anymore tonight. Mm-hmm. And I like I just start thinking that way, and then like the game finally loads. You go, I, I, to go all right, whatever. Yeah. I'm gonna do one more time, and you just like dive right back into it. I did that too. Like last night, I was, I was like, it was nine o'clock, and I was like, ah, I want to like watch TV. So like, I think I'm done. But then like, I opened the new area, so I was like, ah, you know, I'll, I'll kind of go into this area and see what it's all about. You can't just do that. Like I just like went all the way in. I got through the entire area, and I accidentally walked into the boss, so I got nothing out of it because I lost all my souls. Was it not like a big open space that you just kind of know like? There's a I, boss coming. I was confused because like it was an open space, but I could see that there was, like, a haze on a door in a church. So I thought that was where you had to enter the boss. But no, when I walked into the open space, that was the back of the boss, and then the bosses appeared. So, oh, okay. This is in the Forbidden Woods, if anyone out there is playing. Oh, I got to get there. I can't. You're Build too far the- ahead now. I'm almost cl- I've am almost. i cleared almost everything in the Forbidden Woods. I'm pretty much just running to the boss attempting to kill it now. Oh, my God, dude. You got it. This always happens. This is what's been happening is that you get ahead of me and then we want to like catch up. And then so I'm like, well, just come kill this boss for me. And then you always join my game and we just – and then you make fun of me. I am so Ew. glad I killed the Cleric Beast, which is the first boss for people that don't know, by myself. Or I would never live it down with Steve because he would tell me every time that I've never been a boss by myself. No. You haven't beaten one by yourself? No, besides the cleric beast, because every time we just like we want to do something, and so it's like it's fun to play together. That's like that's like my main defense is that people are like, oh, you're not playing it the proper way, but it's like it's a lot of fun to play. You'll <laughs> beat you'll beat the witch of Hemlock by yourself. That's a really easy battle. The easiest, apparently, according to the list, whatever list you look yeah, at. Yeah, which like I knew it. Like I just beat it in my third try. I was like, yeah, that's probably the easiest boss. So you'll beat that one. And, like, I thought that this one was easy that I'm in now, but apparently it's, like, one of the hardest ones, which makes me scary. It makes, makes me scared because I feel like there's a transformation that I haven't gotten to yet that's really difficult. What, what so. boss is it? Do, do you care if you say? Oh, God. Um, it doesn't have to be the name. Just, like, what is it? It's, like, three knights. One of them throws fireballs. One of them hits you with a katana, and one of, you sh- one of them shoots. Uh, that sounds they kind of, awful. They kind of follow you around, and they each have their own health bar. Oh, God. So but what I hear happens is that uh, when you get one of them down to 30%, then the everyone's everyone gets firepower on everything. Like the katana has like fire charge or whatever. And when you get all of them down to 30%, they spawn two huge snakes that can one-hit kill you. So like you have to avoid them as you're trying to kill three people. <gasps> Okay. So and you can't. What if you take? So if you were to kill two of them, I'm guessing. Like, let's say you don't even touch one guy, but you just yeah. kill the other two. I'm, I assume he's just gonna have the snakes come out anyways. Yep, he's gonna have to get snakes come out, come out anyway. So oh, God, this game gets it just gets harder and harder. It's to the point where like you think like when I hear you say that, I'm like I have no idea how I'm gonna beat that, but I know that if I get there, I'll be you'll, able to figure find, it out. You'll find a way. Exactly. Yeah, it's really weird how that works. That. I don't see like we're gonna play after we finish this up. I don't see myself beating that boss tonight. I think it's gonna have to come at a later time. I'm probably just gonna have to grind out some souls tonight or echoes. I, I always call them souls, which is funny because I didn't even play Demon Dark, Dark Souls, Souls. But, I just but it just makes sense because like they, I just suck them out of people, and so they look like souls. 
But uh, yeah, I'll probably just have to grind tonight and uh, try and get my uh, my character upgraded. I think I'm at level 47 now, so I'm getting up there. Oh my god, am I still in the 30s? I think you are, Neil. Dude, I, I, got, I got it. I don't think I, I think actually I got out of range with you to. Uh, I, don't I know, know that's what I'm worried about. I gotta start going. I, that's why I gotta catch up. Like I'm. I'm not like a little bit behind. Like I'm two full areas behind you now. I think. Yes, you are. You're two full areas. Three actually, because you didn't go. You, did you kill the hunters yet? What hunt, hunters? The one, the one with the electric mace and the no gun. Yes, you're three areas because you have to go that way too. Oh my god! See, that's why like it's stacking up too much. What's gonna happen? I think eventually is um you're gonna get too far ahead, and I'm just gonna start losing interest slowly in it. No, where you we'll, can't. Where, it's not that I'll just stop. I'll just play less and less. But we still have to do the Chalice Dungeons. I wonder if we need... Yes, Chalice Dungeons. And I need you to... Uh, uh, I need you to like help me on the boss if I get stuck. Yeah, well, you're going too fast. I, I should have... I, I want to play this weekend to catch play. up. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm going to get more Combat X, X this weekend, so you'll be able to catch up. We'll see if I actually play it. I never end up... You might be able to catch up, but make sure you don't mustard. Uh, uh, oh, that one coming far, yeah. far away. But the you, point is, yeah, we absolutely love Bloodborne. <laughs> we literally yeah. just... Look, I think it's been a couple days for the first text I'll get from Steve in the morning because we like to text each other good morning and good night every day. We, are, we he, text each other a lot when we're at work. Because <laughs> it's work. And But the first thing you'll text me at like 7.30 or even early. I think one time it was like 6.30. You're just like... Is it time to play Bloodborne yet? It's true. It's always on my mind. I got it's money on my mind, you know. It's just a countdown. Until, and I'll just read stuff. Like, if it gets close to the end of the day, I'm like, I want to play Bloodborne. I'll just, like, look up. I don't, like, look up strategy guys. I don't want to, like, know how to kill people. I'll read lore. Yeah. Like, I'm, it's, like, the nerdy thing. Like, I'm not looking up strategy guys to beat the boss. I'm looking up the lore of why this boss exists in this world. It's a fun game, Neil. It's a really fun Like, the most fun I've had in a long time. And it's and I don't know what game's coming out next. I'm gonna get so it's carrying me for it. Uh, what are you gonna get next? That's like I really don't know. I, there's nothing that's even on my radar. I'm probably gonna get. I mean, I got the 3ds games. I gotta play, of course. I got yes. some bravery. You, you should just concentrate concentrate on that. But Bloodborne. Yes, Bloodborne is fun. You know what else is fun, Neil? What, Steve? Bloodborne. <laughs> Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Uh, did, should, did we mention why you decided to get it? Because I watched you playing it and I thought it would just look really fun watching you play it. Yes. watching Neil likes watching me is what that comes down to. Well, it's it's a really cool game and we keep – I know we're just fawning over it, but it's really scary. Like it's terrifying. Because you'll crows, just get to a man. new area and the, it will just be... Noise, the noise that the crows make oh is haunting in my sleep. And they're, they're so smart. Like, they're, they're clearly there to be scary because they're just... They're black and they're just on the ground and they barely move. So, like, they're yep. hard to see if you're fighting something else because you're just not paying attention to it. And then they just leap out of nowhere making the most terrifying screech. Crow! <laughs> that was my, my crow. But the thing about Bloodborne that I really like, as we keep saying... Is that it's a it's a terrifying game. It's really hard. It's really challenging. But whenever you play it with a friend, it slowly just becomes really funny. And I don't know yeah, how that does. works. It does. There was actually a good a good moment where me and Neil were doing a chalice dungeon, and uh, did I spawn somewhere? Yeah, I spawned somewhere, and uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, was, I was coming back, and uh, when I went back the first time, I used an elevator, and I was rolling and running. So I ran to where the, I thought the elevator was, and I stepped off the edge and realized I was falling to my death. But I was like in the middle of a conversation with Neil, and as soon as I stepped off the edge, I just went, "Oh God, Neil!" <laughs> and I just <laughs> fell to my death and just failed out of the challenge dungeon, which is really, really annoying because then like that breaks the connection between the two of us, and then we had to reinvite me. <laughs> the best is like so the co-op system is so dumb. Everyone admits it's dumb. What you have to do is one person you have like insight, which are points, and you have to get them by killing bosses and whatnot. And you have to spend one point to get someone to come into your game. And so if I spend a point to get Steve into my game, if one of us dies, the connection's broken. So it's like it's very important you don't die. And like in this one chalice dungeon, which wasn't hard, we got through it eventually in like 
two minutes when we really did it, but like there were just these axes that would just kept killing us. They were swinging. We mm. get like poison. <laughs> like we were standing, we were about to go in that doorway, we were and I we was were like, like dumb. I was like, there's two skeletons about to come out of this door, and he just stood there and they just both jumped out of this door and killed you in one hit. <laughs> and so it's just it's stupid stuff like that. Like we're fighting this giant, crazy, terrifying wolf elk boss thing in a church or whatever. And it's this really powerful, really tough boss. And the mm-hmm. whole time we're just laughing because it's we're just like we can't concentrate on it because we're throwing Molotovs over it and we can't hit it with anything. Just, the dude moves so slow. It's so annoying. There was also another great moment where me and you were playing. Uh, we were facing the blood starved beast, which is a uh, which is a boss. And uh, he charges up this really big hit. And he's all pumped up to get it, and he just whiffs entirely. And in the middle of this battle, which the Bloodstar Beast is probably the hardest boss that we've faced so far, I just, I just go to Neil. I go, we won't talk about that, Neil. <laughs> the biggest miss of like the just biggest, like a like, solid you, three seconds winds uh, up, uh, and like the Bloodstar Beast just like moved. He just hit a wall instead. But so so monotone. You go, we won't talk about that. In the middle of it, too. While I was trying to dodge its attack. The best was when we were fighting that same beast. And- yeah, and I just ran up to it and got killed in like two seconds. I was like, I got this. It was we were literally – I used an insight point. We go in there and I'm like, all right, you can do the visceral attacks, which is the way you counter them to do a lot more damage, but you have to time it perfectly. And Steve goes, yeah, I got this. And he goes right up to like literally face-to-face with the guy. <laughs> and then he just misses the parry and he just grabs him, eats his face off. And I'm just sitting, I'm just watching him like, well, there goes that battle. That didn't even last 30 seconds. <laughs> I tried my best, Neil. You know. I did my best. And you you were so confident going into those battles because you beat it by yourself. And then you died like three or four times in a row, like immediately. But then we finally got it. We did finally get it. It's still, it's one of the most rewarding feelings to beat a boss in that game. It is. It is a good time, Neil. Good times for all. Good time that we should probably go play it soon. Within five minutes once I do the closing. So, Neil, why don't we send this into the (laughs) mail and check it on the other side? (laughs) I didn't have one ready. I can tell. You did good, Steve. I liked it. You did really good. Send it into the mail and check it on the other side. That'll catch on with the kids. This has been the 12th Qualified Gamer Guys podcast. Thanks for joining me, Steve. There's Neil. Uh, Follow us on Twitter (laughs) at QualifyGGS. That's our handle. Gamer Guys didn't fit. So we had to do GGS. Follow us there and we'll tweet out every time we post a video on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, subscribe. You're here. You've done it. Hit the subscribe button, mash the like button, comment, do something. Uh, let us know what you watched. Tell us how you like it. Tell us how you hate it. Uh, big news. We've reached 20 cents in ad revenue. Oh, so. <laughs> wow. we can retire. We can quit our jobs now and go full We're time in a a whole KGG. Whole We're going to full time KGG it. That would be the worst financial decision of our life. <laughs> Moving off 20 cents, the 10 cents 20 each. cents, not even 20 cents, 20 cents every two months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's a dollar, oh, so sad. It's $1. 20 a year. Uh, Twitch is Qualified Gamer Guys. Follow us at twitch.tv slash Qualified Gamer Guys. If you liked our intro music, you should go over to soundcloud.com slash gearheadedm. Check out the songs that are posted there because they're quite similar to our soundtrack. But not as good because what's as good as our soundtrack, Neil? Nothing. Nothing. That was the answer. You thought about it. You got it right. Bloodborne is correct. <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, go up, sign up for Core Gamer at coregamer.com. Enter in your email. You will not regret it. I hope not, at least. Or else we'll make you regret it. Send us an email at uh, qualifiedgamerguys at gmail.com. We'll answer it. We've never gotten an email. (laughs) (laughs) We got hundreds. We can't even answer it. You're supposed to be like, if we don't answer you, we're sorry. We're getting so much email. It's hard to handle it all. We got so much email that we answer no one. Um, Anyway. So email us questions, comments, pictures, uh, clothes, pictures. Uh, but we might send unclothed pictures back, so 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so send us the question. We like questions. We like emails. We're just waiting for that one time when we do get an email because you're going to make our week. So thanks for everyone that has been listening. We really appreciate your, your, uh, your passion and your, uh, your, your stupidity. Because <laughs> <laughs> who would listen to this? It's, we're just two guys. Just talking about games. Two stupid guys. We're just talking about Bloodborne and then other games. We should talk about Bloodborne. Don't miss the Blood Bay, uh, uh, Qualify Game Guys Bloodborne <laughs> podcast next week. All right. So thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, you can catch the next episode next Tuesday, episode 13. Ooh, unlucky. Maybe we'll have a special segment for that one, Neil. All Bloodborne. No, I was thinking like uh, something with the fact that 13 is unlucky. <laughs> we had a Friday the 13th. Well, oh. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. You know, because we like we like. I mean, last week we we led off with our Easter eggs. Those were completely in the beginning of the show, and not last. <laughs> not week at not all. totally at the end in the close no. between the Twitter handle and the Twitch handle. Yeah, so like we like doing you know holiday specific things. So maybe episode 13 gets a special shout out. Who knows? Me and Neil certainly don't. We probably won't know until five minutes before we hit record. So yeah. that's because we fly by the seat of our pants. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the Qualified Gamer Guys podcast. This is Steve. I almost said this is Neil. This is Steve talking for Neil, and we will see you next week. Bye bye. Bloodborne. Hey! <laughs> Welcome to the Qualified Gamer Guys podcast number 12. 12 is my lucky number, Neil. Is it? No, it's not. It's actually 14. All right. Why so 14? we're going to start this off by shouting out to our good friends over at Core Gamer. 